Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I am your host, Brian Scott. Today we have some fascinating channelings from Quo dealing with the divine feminine, addressing the shift in consciousness when we move into fourth density in relation to third density thinking and how this is similar to our discussions of the feminine and masculine. I found this to be very educational in helping me to understand what this shift into fourth density and the harvest is what they call it is all about. Quo is a group of higher density beings channeled through LL Research. We've discussed them on several episodes and you can get a lot more background information from their website at llresearch.org and my previous episodes in the Quo playlist. We begin with a recent channeling from August 14th, 2022. The group question was, why is the divine feminine needed at this time during the harvest of planet Earth? Austin channeling begins, Quo, I am Quo, and I am now with this instrument at this time. We greet this circle of seeking in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator, and indeed it is within this love and light that we witness your group for from our perspective, the great pillar of radiant light shining as bright as the sun that we may see from time space is a great majesty to behold. It may be seen to the ends of the creation. We are joyed and excited to be called to this group. We sense within this group anticipation and excitement and we share this with you for we too learned from this process and we are aided by your call to us as we respond to you. This is not a process of us imparting upon you information, but rather us joining together as seekers of the one infinite creator. This is an important aspect of this circle of seeking to highlight, for it involves our regular request that any words that we speak through these instruments, any ideas presented to this group, we ask that you weigh them against your heart and use your divine discernment to determine if they are proper for you at this time upon your journey. We are not masters wishing to guide you upon a specific path, but rather fellow journeyers who have walked the path and wish to share simply what we have seen. We would also offer to this circle an affirmation that the individuals serving as instruments commented on before the circle began, and that is the one known as Carla has joined this circle, indeed not just for this moment, but for your entire time together throughout this gathering. She holds each within this group with a warm embrace and a bright, radiant smile of pride and happiness that you may join together as you have. Your question for this evening is indeed a very prescient and important question, for it combines two elements of your current experience upon this planet and highlights an integral aspect between these two elements. That is that which is known as the Divine Feminine, and the time upon your planet currently being experienced called the Harvest. Indeed, as the question insightfully points out, the Divine Feminine, the primal aspect of the Creator, is incredibly integral in this process of harvest. As we speak to this concept of the Divine Feminine, we ask that you release any strict conceptualizations of what this may mean, including any ideas of how the Divine Feminine may manifest in your current time, for we find upon your planet that the realization of the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine have been very confused, and it is indeed in this confusion that much healing may take place. The process of harvest is one that has many aspects among individuals, among groups, among your entire planetary population, and within the planet itself. We may draw your attention to the aspect of the divine feminine that is manifest within your space slash time, known to you as your Mother Earth or as she is known in other ways, Gaia or Terra. In attempting to understand how the Divine Feminine is related to the process of harvest at this time, we would ask you to examine your planetary population's relationship with this Divine Being of planet Earth, and how your unrealized social memory complex has developed a distorted relationship with this planet. For it is within this relationship that you may view the particular distortions of your realization of the Divine Feminine. There is much exploitation, there is much harm. 
there is much healing to be done within this realm. It is indeed the planet itself which will birth the fourth density, and we ask you to consider this process of gestation and birth given to the Divine Feminine, and how your Mother Earth has provided an environment for you at this time to experience the third density, and to go as a being in the womb, to develop a sense of individuality, of purpose and direction, as individuals and as a population. This process of third density is akin to that gestation period within the womb. And indeed, it has been a difficult period for your planet and for your population. But as the fourth density approaches, opportunities to realize and accentuate those distortions given to your planet itself are becoming more and more available. And within this realization, there is the light of fourth density, which is the light of love itself, of unconditional love and understanding. And it is through these aspects of fourth density that your planet may come into a more proper relationship with its population as the population comes to reconcile the difficult aspects of that relationship. It is an essential and necessary aspect of the harvest at this time that these distortions be realized and healed, and it is through this healing that the birth of fourth density may take place. This planetary aspect of the divine feminine and the harvest is but one among many that may be explored. At this time, we will transfer this contact to the one known as Trisha to explore further aspects of this relationship. We are quo. We are quo, and we are now with this instrument. We appreciate the opportunity to exercise these instruments in this circle of support and love. These instruments similarly appreciate the patience and gentle touch as they step forward in this practice. Indeed, it is the flavor or hue of support which this group is providing for self and fellow self that is of the divine feminine nature that is of this element which can be of a guiding light if you will it can be of great assistance and of utmost importance as this planet transitions and gives birth to its new air as the instrument prior stated there are many and various avenues and opportunities for the healing of potential imbalance between the divine masculine and the divine feminine again we stress that these energies do not necessarily have the same definitions in terms of identity as they do in your experience. Instead, they describe a particular genre of energy, that of taking or that of receiving, that of love or that of wisdom, that of strength or that of vulnerability. We imagine that those on this planet at this time are encountered frequently with instances of this energetic imbalance, the closing of the heart, the distancing of self from other self, the energetic investment onto ego. Indeed, this was a how you may call calculated or purposeful move on the part of the creation as every moment, every experience acts as an opportunity for growth, for further knowing self, for further knowing other self, and for further realizing the creatorship of all. Hence, we speak of this need for the divine feminine. It is that need for the open heart, the need for the nurturing of self, the need for the nurturing of other self, and through that action itself, may seem extraordinarily small in the scale of a whole populational harvest. It is those tiny micro-movements that act, in fact, as beacons, as lighthouses for inspiration, as vibrational positive transfers between aspects of the creation. So we see that the healing of the heart, the healing of the self, what the self sees as identity, the pains and trauma that come with the self, is very much of great import at this time. For then that healing can traverse the space between self and other self to allow the healing of the aspect of the illusion which you call relationship. And with this action, one heart opens yet another, and opens another and another, multiplying. When the intention is set towards this healing of imbalance, the letting go of a control, the full acceptance of everything, then you may see the clear channel, not only of us tiny aspects of the Creator, but the creation itself as a whole. We ask you to imagine yourself as a mother tending to her child. As you walk this planet, as you dance within this illusion, we encourage you to operate with an open heart, open arms, and the gentle touch, and the desire to serve and nurture other self. It is through that dynamic that the what you may call reality of this experience can be discovered, 
the true interconnectedness and unity of all things, the realization that the hand outreaching is the hand as the hand that grasps. Once those connections are established and fortified and fully embodied, so then may the heart of not just the self, but the planet be full, the experience be primed, and the space be advantageous for this massive growth, this step in evolution. We've heard many words throughout this gathering of seekers that appear to align with this desire to heal, to hear, to fully see, a desire to uplift the planetary consciousness towards this evolutionary step. And we are immensely appreciative. It is this kind of light work, this desire to serve unconditionally towards love, that is extraordinarily healing, though it may not seem to be, is incredibly inspiring. Before we transfer our contact, we would like to leave through this instrument with the thought that every entity in this group holds the potential to be that lighthouse, that spark of inspiration, that source of connection for another seeker on the path, for another self-navigating this experience. And we wish to remind each that position is one which each and every one of you is absolutely worthy of standing proud within. For each individual light shines so beautifully so purely, so brightly. As we have expressed, it is an immense moment of joy to witness the working of this circle and the almost effortless blending of energy which has occurred during this or rather that which you call this law of one gathering. Each time the heart opens as you relate to another, it is as if a light has become brighter and though metaphysically not visible to your physical eyes, it is quite apparent to us. And to all who may witness these workings from beyond your space-time realm, we witness and cherish this as we do the many such workings around your planet, where those of your people come together in mutual support and loving kindness with a desire to see one another. And it is this type of work which makes a way for the healing of the feminine within the self and within the collective. For if one studies that known to you as history, at least those recorded portions thereof, one sees not just a story of events and empires, migrations, and so forth, but one sees one of our universe's most fundamental polarities in action, that being the fluid, dynamic, ever-shifting ratio and tension between the masculine and feminine. And what characterizes your particular planetary people's story, at least among its dominant cultures, is a story in wherein the feminine has been subjugated exploited, suppressed, and feared by those of your peoples. We have watched the technologies change over your centuries and millennia, from fist to sticks and stones to swords to gunpowder, and to your more digital-based technologies, all expressions of this great conflict of imbalance between the masculine and the feminine. Yours is a story, as a collective, with many, many exceptions on an individual level and in pockets of cultures in society, but in the main, a story of imbalance between these two fundamental energies. These energies, in proper proportion and balance, which differ for each individual, are sacred when understood. There is no inherent taint in the masculine principle. There is only, rather, its destructive, harmful qualities when it has come out of balance with the feminine principle. It takes little to see evidence of this imbalance as there is conflict within the self and between peoples and as we had spoken previously with your relationship with your mother, that being the planet which gives you life and experience in this plane. Thus, it is of central importance to heal, to address, and to heal this imbalance within the self, within your peoples. To address the imbalance is to restore your place as a child of the Creator, as a member of this infinite cosmos. In terms of that, which may begin to heal this imbalance and to restore that which has been suppressed of the feminine within you. There are many ways unique to each individual in each culture. There are, however, some central principles which we may suggest for your attention. They include and perhaps begin with listening. For as we have said, what characterizes the masculine and feminine at its root is that which seeks for the masculine and that which awaits the seeking for the feminine. Inherent in that feminine quality, which is inherent in all beings, is this quality of receptivity, of receiving, of not embarking upon a desire to penetrate 
the unknown to bring back insight and understanding or to configure one's environment to a vision of one's liking, but rather to await with humility and sensitivity that which is always speaking to you. It is this quality of listening which is necessary in honoring of the feminine within you and of your subconscious resources. One who is not in a state of listening feels that perhaps they have the right answer, that they need not pay attention, and this imbalance may lead to imposition and infringement. But one who is listening is recognizing that there is an intelligence greater than their own, that they are but a vessel or instrument for a will greater than that of their conscious mind and their conscious drives. It is not within your conscious minds or the masculine principle alone to know how to chart the way to fourth density from your present position. No genius, shall we say, upon your planet has a set of instructions which, if followed, will produce fourth density. Rather, it is by listening to that which wants to be born, which involves patience, sensitivity, and humility, that the self may more and more cooperate with these energies in whatever way they may manifest for the self or the group whether it is toward a particular service or just on a fundamental level towards a change in one's consciousness and orientation and attitude. For fourth density, and the planet through which this level is born is knocking on each of your hearts and on the doors of the hearts of each of your peoples upon your planet. It is the overabundance of the masculine that has numbed your peoples to this knocking, shall we figuratively say, upon the doors of your heart. If those upon your planet could set down the mentality of the masculine mindset, be they gendered male or female, and hear this music, it would begin, shall we say, playing in the air. Your societies would find their centers of gravity shifting, their network of ideas changing, their configuration of power economy and social relationship transforming by being receptive. We do not mean to imply non-action. We mean to apply a humble awaiting and listening from a place of receptivity to that which wants to be born. And we assure you that whatever your position in society, reinforced as it is by the sense that you can do little to affect the outcome of trends and forces in politics and governments greater than yourself, each has a critical role to play. You would not be here if you had no part to play. And that role is first and foremost that which transpires not on the outer plane of your actions, but within the sanctum of your heart. Wherever you may find your body in this city, in your bedroom, at the workplace, fourth density is born, shall we say, in your chest where your true power resides to create change in this world, which is to say to change yourself by allowing, by trusting, by taking time to set aside your preconceived notions and your plans about what should be done and what needs to be done and by listening. And as you change your heart, or shall we say, heal your heart and allow the layers and the burdens that you have carried for so long to fall away, light shines through you, not by virtue of a particular feat or some particular talent, but because you are discovering who you really are. You are discovering that you are the one you are that which made this. You are that which chose to forget what you really are, that you might play the game of returning to that which you never left. And in this return, and in this allowing, light shines through your mind-body-spirit complex. Not the light of your personality, per se, which is its own light, but the light of the Creator. We move toward concluding through this instrument by reminding you that fourth density is not something that happens to you, but rather happens through you. Fourth density is waiting right now to be born, and it is born only when those upon your planet are ready to release their resistance, their war, and their ideas and cooperate with this energy. Fundamental to this is a rebalancing and a healing of the feminine-masculine ratio and the cherishing and the honoring and uplifting of that which has been suppressed and feared and conquered, seemingly, that being the divine feminine, of which each is a unique representation. We move back to a channeling given on September 25th, 2010. Our question today is, firstly, we would like you to give us a synopsis of the development of the creation 
from prior to the point of the first distortion all the way through the third distortion. Secondly, we would like to ask about the spiritual principles of the divine masculine and feminine and where those two polarities first became manifest. How and when they split, one becoming masculine and the other becoming feminine. Thank you. We are those known to you as the principle of Quo. Greetings, my friends, in the love and light of the one infinite creator in whose service we come to you this evening. Firstly, you have asked about the first three distortions, and of course, as is our habit, we go back a bit to talk about the only thing that is not a distortion in terms of the cosmology of the law of one, and that, my friends, is unity. You and we are one. You and each other are one. The tribe of humankind on planet Earth is one. This is simply due to the fact that the only thing in creation is the creator, and each of you is a spark or an element of that infinite creator. You shall always be you, through all the octaves of the creator. You shall take upon yourself sex, appearance, gifts, and limitations. You shall bring with you into incarnation relationships you have programmed, because it seemed useful to you that such relationships, although always abrasive and always causing some suffering, would serve to bring both of you more into balance. And in third density's polarity is the cauldron, the furnace, the athenor in which the dross is burned away and you become purified to be truly yourself as the one known as G has said. Every instinct tells you that this is folly. I am not one with that person. I am not one with that nation state. I'm not one with that philosophy or that opinion. Ah, but you are. You are all things. The challenge you see of third density is moving from chaos into mystery. From the scrabbling to know, to own, to have, to be, into the relaxation of allowing yourself to be who you are, to move beyond the surface of life. You, my friends, are deep sea divers. You are not satisfied to skitter across the ocean of life like a dragonfly. You dive deep and you seek the highest and best truth you can find. And eventually, you pierce the veil of otherness and begin to feel the threads of the commonality about which the one known as F was speaking that lie behind the shapes of judgment. This unity is for all of you, and yet it does not keep you from being an individual. Every choice you have made in every incarnation goes into the personality you chose for this incarnation. My friends, it is as if you took a suitcase, not a large suitcase, but an overnight bag, it's a small stay, one incarnation after all. You do not need much, a few gifts, a few relationships. You pack your bag, you pack your limitations, you pack your challenges, and you set out to plunge into a dark world. For the sun may shine upon the earth, but in terms of spiritual seeking, all is darkness. Nothing can be seen, nothing can be known or proved, and it is up to you to disengage yourself from your culture, your parenting, your hard-learned lessons of fitting in, to become, as this instrument was saying, a witness to yourself. It is not that you are a witness, you are you. It is that when you witness your own life, it gives you a sense of proportion. This instrument often in challenging circumstances creates a cartoon in her mind and then busies herself by putting the right caption under it to make herself laugh. The more ways you have of lifting yourself away from the impulsivity of quick emotion and touching into the balm of Gilead, which is the underlying self that is one with the Creator, the more riches your incarnation shall have for you. Unity is the deepest and most profound truth that we know. You are all the Creator. Do not turn it around and try to say that the Creator is all of you, for the Creator is infinite. If the Creator was not infinite, the creation would not be one. Now you asked about the first three distortions of the law of one. In the deepest sense, the first distortion is free will, because it was by choosing by free will to know itself that the Creator created the creation of which you are all a part. We wish to know more about himself. His curiosity is endless and his sense of play and artistry equally infinite. And so, as you experience and make the catalyst that happens to you into wisdom and received grace, the Creator receives that harvest and knows ever more about itself. Even if an entity were to choose all the things that you personally consider to be wrong, yet still that entity is not making an error for he too is offering to the Creator the harvest of his desires and their satisfaction. It was a long time and many, many creations before the Creator decided to try the experiment of offering total free will to the sparks of itself that each of you would call human. Yet this is your situation. Your free will is paramount. 
The other person's free will is also paramount, which means that your rights stop behind your teeth and at the end of your nose. The free will that you have is to make choices for yourself, not for others. Observing and recognizing your own free will and that of others as well is a great key to using your incarnation well. What frees you from those feelings of responsibility that I should do this, I should do that? The question is what do you wish to do? What do you desire to do? What do you wish to set your intention to do? The more you know your own mind, the more you are able to live in a way that respects and honors your own free will and your own ability to choose for yourself at every turn, the better you will know your own desires and can set your own intentions. Therefore, in that instance in which the one known as F quoted, the free will is a paramount distortion of the Logos in that each of you, as sparks of the Creator, have that free will. But the first experience of free will is that of the Creator's, and therefore free will is far before manifestation. It is the setting of intention, that right use of free will that enables the Creator or the Co-Creator, which is each of you, to live a life that is untrammeled by victimhood or confusion. We are not saying that there will not be confusion. There is often confusion. But when you have satisfied yourself as to the object of your desire, if you can focus upon what you actually desire and set your intention concerning that desire, then if you can live according to that intention, your path is always smooth before you. Your confusion, then, is a matter of saying, All right, here is my situation. As I see it, it is thus and thus, and I feel that my highest and best response to that situation is to choose this. Once the choice is made, you simply pursue it, not doubting yourself, not second-guessing yourself, but participating fully and being entirely present with that situation, with that choice, and with all that ensues therefrom. The second distortion of the Law of One is the Logos. Logos is a Greek word, and when you open the Bible to the Gospel of John, it begins with the Logos. In the beginning was the Word. The Greek for that word is Logos. In the beginning was the Logos. The Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. The Logos is with God because the infinite Creator is beyond any manifestation, even the manifestation of the one great original thought or Logos of unconditional and absolute love. Therefore, the Creator set its intention to know itself. And so were born the infinite billions of galaxies and the infinite billions of stars in each galaxy and the millions of opportunities for sentient life that exist in that universe that you can see with your instruments. Yet all things are distortions of love. The challenge is always to find the love, to see through the chaos that surrounds confused entities, relationships, and so forth. And this is true whether it is the relationships of the family between two people or the relationships between nation states. The world lives on the surface of things, skittering along on the surface in lie after lie after lie, for there are always advantages to be seen, power to be found, influence to be felt, resources to gather, and the tangled emotions of entities who only imperfectly grasp who they are and why they are here. Do not stay there, my friends. Dive down into the ocean, that infinite ocean of beingness, until you Come to the calm waters where pearls are creating themselves from the sand that irritates the shell, where beauty and truth exist like jewels that they are, and where the ideals that you have in your heart of hearts walk and breathe and live in a reality beyond all realities that you can imagine. It is wonderful to find those places deep beneath the surface with their tsunamis and hurricanes and storms, where all remains peaceful and the movement of the great heart of creation is slow and steady. Now naturally one must exist on the surface of life. One must learn the buzz and get along with the one's fellow human beings. And that is all to the good. That is the source of your catalyst. Be grateful for that confusion and that chaos. But take the blessings and the challenges that you have and dive deep into the waters of infinity and eternity. They live within your hearts. You only have to open the door to your heart and find those deep waters and as we have said so often to you, my friends, the key to that door is silence. The third distortion is that of light, and it is only at that point far down the chain of the Law of One that manifestations occur. Manifestation is slow in coming. Much must be accompanied first, yet you live in a world of manifestations, and thusly you see you are always climbing what this instrument would call Jacob's Ladder, only you are climbing it down into the depths of your own heart, 
And there the Creator lies, beyond all manifestation, beyond all images, beyond all ideas of what is real, ready to heal, ready to nurture, ready to love. Many would say, that sounds as though the Creator were the Divine Mother, not the Divine Father, and this is our bridge to speak about the role of the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. It can be very confusing to think about masculinity and femininity because there are so many levels, all of them equally valid, at which that dynamic opposition occurs. The way most entities think about masculinity and femininity is according to the outward appearance of an entity. If an entity has breasts and a vagina, that entity is feminine. If an entity has a penis and a scrotum, that entity is masculine. My friends, this barely scratches the surface. But at least almost everyone is aware of the difference between the two and aware that society has given men and women quite different roles. And not just the society, but the biological nature of men and women has enculturated and preserved those differences and even attempted to codify them. And at that level, it is well to note that the chief difference between the two sexes is that one biological sex is given the ocean of life so that she necessarily becomes a priestess who can conceive and bear a child. The ocean of life runs through her and she is able to manifest that child. The male is not given this contact, this participation, in the ocean of life. He can come close, he can never experience the ebb and flow of the tides of that ocean. Consequently, there is innate in a woman a certain inner power, further it is instinct as well as enculturation that offers to women an absolute and usually complete access to mother love, the love that is beyond and above all loves. That love touches into infinity, which is commensurate with the great gift that women can carry within them. Men, on the other hand, tend to be larger or more powerful, more directed to protect and serve, as the policeman's motto often goes. Yet, both men and women are challenged by the same ideal, and that is to use their power rightly. It is also to be noted that a great source of confusion in your earth world is due to the fact that the male sex is aware of the inner power of women and is somewhat challenged by it. Consequently, there will be every effort made by the usual non-thinking person who is male to keep women in their place, to tell themselves that women are inferior, to belittle them when they have intuition about which men do not know, for it is something they can never understand. The instinct of a bully is not to harmonize but to control, and it is a sorry mess that your societies have tended to make of the possibility of dancing together male and female in utter harmony, seeing themselves as a tag team or on a tandem bicycle, working together, setting their intentions in common, and creating of life a glory and an honestation to the Creator. These things are within your grasp personally. Can you change your society? Do not be concerned with that, for as you change yourself, so you change the world. Now let us dive, as we have encouraged you to do, and look at the male and female aspects from a deeper point of view. When entities have opened their hearts and they are ready to communicate with honesty and with the best truth that they know, and when they are content to lay it all aside and allow the radiance that is pouring through them from the infinite creator to be themselves, then there is the opportunity to awaken to a magical world a world in which the polarities make sense for the first time. When does polarity begin? In the sense in which you ask it, my friends, polarity begins in third density, the only density in which kind of polarity does exist, because it is the only world or environment in which nothing can be known, spiritually speaking. A veil of forgetting is dropped when you enter incarnation, and it is not to be lifted until the incarnation is at an end and you rejoin the dance of creation first hand. The reason for this unknowing is that nothing that you do out of knowledge or hindsight, shall we say, is powerful to you. As the ones of Ross said, you can have a take-home test, an open book test, and look up all the answers and get it all right, but it means nothing to you except a good grade. It is only when you can't look up the answers and you are thrown back upon your resources that you are challenged to find them and use them to move yourself away from what this instrument would call the matrix or consensus reality and into that magical land where things do make sense, where there is a reason for every polarity, light and dark, male and female, old and young, everything in your world has polarity. Electricity works by polarity, gravity works by polarity, and so forth. It is a world of polarity. Now, when one does the magical ritual known as the banishing ritual of the lesser pentagram, which this instrument and the one known as Jim do every morning, 
The first visualization is of what this instrument would call the Star of David, a six-pointed star. It can be visualized thusly. There is an upside-down delta or an upside-down pyramid, which is the feminine principle. And there is the right side up delta or pyramid, which is the masculine principle. And as these two are inevitably attracted to each other, they form a brightly shining star, the guiding motif of your density. Love holds the male and the female principles together. Each is the obverse of the other. The male reaches, the female awaits the reaching. Penetrated more and more, this image yields the awareness that is as inevitable that the sexes or the polarities of humankind harmonize as it is that they are different. Only by loving each other and moving into that locked design that is the Star of David does the third density come to life. Thusly, one principle is not better than the other. They are entirely equal and ready to be harmonized. But according to the free will of each and within the system of magic that this instrument understands, each entity is both biological male and biological female in an infinite subtlety of different ways. Some women, for instance, move more according to male energy than female. Regardless of their biological sexuality, some men reflect the divine feminine with far more clarity than they reflect the divine masculine. And the two come together because they must, because it is within their very DNA to come together and create life. And in creating life, they create the opportunity for service. There is a glyph that is essential to Western ritual magic called the tree of life. There are three pillars to the tree of life. There is a feminine side and there is a masculine side. There is also a central pillar which is created of those elements that magicians of old felt were neither feminine nor masculine. We feel that it is educational and interesting to see what characteristics are considered feminine and which are considered masculine. Yet we do not suggest that you are bound by those judgments. It is simply a picture of relationships that help you to think about what it is to be feminine and what it is to be masculine. Each polarity loves and desires love, yet to the masculine principle is given more aggression, more linear thinking, logic, and such characteristics. To the feminine principle is given that which is not aggressive, but which is immediate, intuitive, and beautiful. The gifts of each make little sense until they have harmonized each to each to form on the small level instead of the level of the world, the Star of David. Generally, those who are masculine by sexuality have come into this incarnation to deal to some extent with power. What is their right use of power? If they can control, should they control? What is the right use of that power? To love, to nurture, to be patient, to forgive. The point of polarity in the sexual sense, whether it is on the surface of life or deep into the archetypal mind, is both to accentuate and to purify those characteristics that seem to go with the sexuality that is biological and then to make the offering to the other sex of all that you have and all that you are. Then you together take up the magical dance of polarity and you can collaborate to do wonderful things. Often it seems as though a couple is not supportive of each other. The woman goes one way and the man goes another. And yet if they are holding each other in love, if they are keeping alive the excitement that bonded them into the Star of David in the first place, then their whole life is richer and fuller. Your incarnation is largely about loving. And learning to love as the Creator loves is a challenge. Each time you're stopped by the opposite sex in transigence in some way, you are tempted to think, ah, I'm disgusted. I would just rather be me and single and alone. Yet in that state you are diminished compared to the strength and depth of your catalyst. Learning to serve each other is the challenge. Thusly we encourage you to glorify and find ever better ways to express that divine principle which is love, distorted according to your sexuality, while at the same time realizing that this polarity is a dance or a game that you are playing in order to learn. You might call third density a Montessori school. Instead of books, you are given games, and they are learning games. Your game is to create love from hatred, unity from disharmony, joy from sadness, hope from fear, consolation from distress. And the polarity you seem to have feeds into that wonderful goal only insofar as it gives you the pathways that you may walk to find the truth within you. There are many paths to the truth. You shall not make a mistake as you walk, although, as the one known as Ra noted, that there are always surprises. My friends, this is, as we said, only the merest tip of the iceberg of this interesting subject. 
If you wish to query at another time, we are delighted to work with you. But for now, we feel that this is all this instrument can do and all that this group can do for maintaining that focus that has given us such a good channel into this instrument this evening. So we would open the meeting to other questions. Is there another query at this time? We are those of Quo. Question, what is the function of judgment in human consciousness? The function of judgment is to place within you a picture, a way to think, a way to be, a way to feel that you may examine for what you would consider to be a virtue. My sister, there is no escaping judgment. The faculty of judgment or differentiation between various characteristics is part and parcel of the human personality. In an entity which has not yet chosen its polarity of service to others or service to self, the faculty of judgment is largely wasted because that judgment is not questioned. As the parents taught, so the child thinks. As the society teaches, so the person thinks. As the companies give advertisements, so the consumer thinks. Judgment is infinite, and yet it goes nowhere for it is not questioned. It is not used except as a bat to hit at that which is other than that which is the person has been taught to think is good. In one who is aware and alert and attentive, the function of judgment in human experiences is to bring from the hall of mirrors a thought to be used as a grist for the mill. The seeking entity gazes upon that judgment and asks itself, where is the love in this thought? For there is love in every corner, cranny and nook of creation. That question takes the seeking spirit on many wondrous side trips. Indeed, the entire hall of mirrors around you is designed for nothing as much as to give you opportunities to feel things, to react and respond to things so that you have something to chew on. You have decisions to make. You have, shall we say, judgments to hand down to yourself. In the one who is oriented towards service to self, judgment will be refined and honed for its own uses, the inclusion of the elite, the exclusion of all others, the relegating of those others to the condition of slavery and non-humanhood. In the hands of the mind and the heart of service to others-oriented entities, the faculty of judgment is to bring to one's attention some part of the personality shell or ego, some part of the self, that universal self that is not yet recognized by the seeker of truth. Thusly, in a way, you could see judgment as an indication of spiritual illness and solution to that judgment that separates as the medicament of love that does not vary from the truth one iota and yet finds the harmony in disparate things. May we answer your question further, my sister? No, that is very helpful. I am Kuo, and I am again with this instrument. We reiterate our sincere gratitude for this circle of seeking, for providing a space for us to speak to not just this necessity of healing, but the potential of healing that is alive within each present and each upon your planet. We feel this topic is quite relevant to close out your gathering of seeking, for such a gathering as this may be seen as an oasis upon your journey through the desert. You find yourself reinvigorated, you're able to rest and realize your true potential and the potential of others within this gathering. And it is our request to you to carry this realization with you as you continue upon your journey and realize that your journey is one of service. And that service involves healing of self and of other self and of all. And the potential that you have witnessed during this gathering is present within you at all times. And indeed, that potential is infinite. At this time, we leave this group in the love and in the light, and in the peace of the one infinite creator, we are Quo, Adonai, Adonai, Vasu, Boragas. One side note for the channeling given on August 14th, 2022, there's a footnote that I found wonderful to hear. It said, for these three instruments, it was their first time channeling in front of a gathered group. They had nervously accepted the invitation to channel on the final day of the 2022 Prague Law of One Gathering. It turned out to be very supportive and conducive atmosphere. The energies have all blended harmoniously together and shared spiritually throughout the weekend so that the circle of seeking was formed. While the attendees tuned together using sacred sounds, the instruments gathered in another room to perform their own tuning. When the instruments finished their tuning and before the circle gathered, Trisha tearfully reported that she could see Carla present and glowing with love and appreciation. So I found these two channelings to be fascinating and important. This is not a discussion of feminism. This is a spiritual discussion of seeking and receiving and the open heart. The idea is that we are all 
feminine and masculine and we carry these polarities and principles within each of us and when we tilt in imbalance towards one or the other that causes a spiritual sort of sickness and in our planet on third density there is the obsession with the masculine and that's what we see in, in the expression of wars and in domination and certain kinds of politics the expression of the masculine can be seen in forms of desire for security and it is also a part of us when we choose to create instead of sit back and go with the flow it's a receiving instead of a penetration and it's important it's a part of how we digest these energies and lights as we move in to fourth density the point is not to get rid of the masculine part of you the point is to open yourself up to the feminine the nurturing part the part that allows your heart to open within that open heart is an entirely new universe and that's where the creator is if we just have this imbalance towards the masculine towards control of others control of the situation that you're in towards domination of anything then you end up with a closed heart and with a closed heart you're not open to the fourth density energies so opening our hearts ends up being some movement towards the feminine on some level and they do emphasize even the smallest moments the micro movements that act as beacons and lighthouses as we move towards the small level opportunities of nurturing the self nurturing others those are all wonderful opportunities and they make a bigger deal than you think it's a shift in thinking and understanding the world that you're in you're raised in a masculine society you're raised in a masculine world and you have to change and open yourself up no matter what your actual gender is it's not about the gender this principle the divine feminine if opened up to allows us to enter into the fourth density positive world there's a place for both you can look at the sun as the masculine element it's projecting its rays all around and you can look at the planets as the feminine element they're receiving the rays of light and creating these oases within the solar system and so are you a planet or a sun they're both needed for the proper functioning of the solar system and if you look at everything you need both the masculine and feminine to birth a child in this world there is fundamentally ingrained in the pattern of third density the need for a balance in both and so when you get imbalances towards the masculine you get wars you get domination you get elites you get all kinds of things because the masculine imbalance can end up being a distortion towards service to self you can find all episodes of the reality revolution at therealityrevolution.com now available at newearth.art powerful fourth density technologies art magic sigils images designed to magnetize and broadcast specific energies and intentions you can access these images to help you find true prosperity large sums of money true love radiant health and spiritual enlightenment with unique portals into the new earth these images are available for you you can acquire prints of any image you can acquire magnets mugs iphone cases t-shirts hoodies greeting cards coasters and several different gallery wraps and styles of canvas you can also get these images in a variety of different sizes and dimensions you can purchase these in a variety of different ways and they are here to enable you to transform your life you can go to wall previews and look at these images and you can check them out with different dimensions in many cases you can get images up to 72 inches for any of these images they are designed as unique technologies for you to look into infused with magical light at www.newearth.art welcome to the reality revolution